Hi there, and welcome at a new uh, screencast on TypeScript design patterns. And in this cast, we'll be discussing the adapter pattern. When we look at the definition of the adapter pattern, you will notice that it uh, converts an interface of one class into another interface that the client actually expects. And uh, adapter cl uh, lets classes work together that otherwise couldn't work together because they have incompatible interfaces. So when you see this a lot is when you have third-party libraries uh, that you connect with and they have a another public interface uh, than your application actually wants to use. Um, another thing where you can use this for is if you do not want to be depending on the public API of a third-party library throughout your application. So what you can then do is you create an adapter. The adapter calls the public API of, API of the external library. And uh, if in one way the public API of the external library changes, all you need to do is change your adapter. And throughout your code where you use this adapter, you can keep using the same code, so you will not need any other changes. So an adapter pattern is a very useful pattern. You see it used in a .NET framework as well, where you have, for example, a table adapters, where we have a SQL table adapter and a ODDB table adapter. Both allow us to fetch data from a table, execute queries on those tables, pass parameters to those tables, but they do not uh, re you, your application, then does not rely on how you would actually execute a query on SQL Server and how you would actually execute a query on a, for example, access database when you use the ODDB data adapter. Uh, there is a difference, for example, with SQL Server, you can add named parameters, and when we look at ODDB, you do not have named parameters. However, our client application that is using the data adapters DB table adapters, they do not have a note notion of how these queries are executed and how these parameters are added. So um, when we look at the UML class diagram here, we see that we have an adapter and the adapter has a request method and it will call an adaptee, but we'll call a specific request. So the adapter has a request method, the client just calls the request method and the uh, adapter then calls the specific request method on the adaptee. If this public API of this adaptee would change uh, from specific request to uh, specific requests version 2, then your adapter needs to change to instead of calling specific request to calling specific request number 2, but your client application, as long as it uses this adapter, will not need to change a single bit. So um, we've created some sample code, so let's switch over to Visual Studio. Uh, and what we see here is a third-party library, a module, third-party lib, that has a string new server, which has a method get string. And we have an array new server, which has a method get array. However, in our client application, we do not uh, want to depend on those public APIs uh, and second we do not want to make different calls to different methods for different types of news servers. Our client is, application is just interested in news items and not in specific uh, specificalities of the string news server or the array news server. So how does it work? Uh, in the adapter pattern, you always define a new interface. And this interface is local to your client application. In our case, I created a news, iNews server interface with a get news method, which returns an array of string. That's what we got here. So what we then need to do is we need to create an adapter for both the uh, third party library string news server and the array news server. And the adapter will have a method get news, and internally those adapters will call the specific get string and transform the format and then uh, call get array to return the items. So when we look at our string news server adapter, we see it over here. What we do here is, is that we actually wrap the string news server. So in our constructor, on our string news server adapter, we have a private variable news server and we uh, set that to a third party string new server. Uh, 
with a uh, some properties here, username and password, just as an example. The important thing, however, is that this string new server adapter, of course, implements the iNews server's interface and as such has a get news method. The get news method will call it this new server get string, so it will call the third party library string new server get string, and it will then transform the result to an, a string array because the uh, actual result being returned is a uh, uh, delimited string. We just return that back to a string array. So that's for the string new server adap adapter. Then we have a array new server adapter. It also, of course, implements the iNews server interface and as such has a public method get news. In this case, however, in our constructor, we wrap the third party library array new server. We set some properties, the URL in this, in this case, and in our get news method, we call it this new server get array, which will uh, return. There's no need to transform the result at all. When we then look at our load function here, over here, we see that we create a new news loader. And the news loader is a class that has a single method called load, which expects an iNews server interface. And on that server, the iNews server, it will just call get news. And for each value it uh, returns, so for each news item it returns, we write it to the output. When we see that in action, we can look over here. Let's go down to the sample code. So we create a new news loader and then we load the array news server information, news items. So we get news item one, two, and three. And we then use a string news server adapter where we call load and we get return items one, two, and three. 